is 12 o'clock. Here is the media news. First, the top stories. INEC worried over low collection of PVC in Ogun State. El Rufai orders arrest of youth leaders who ask Indigo to leave the North. New five political parties approved by INEC. Security forces repel attack by Boko Haram and Medjugorje. In foreign, people in the UK are voting in the general poll and UAE threatens to jail pro Qatar citizens as regional crisis escalate. Good afternoon, I am Ahimerio O.I.H.N. and bringing you the news and details shortly. And now in detail, Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has expressed concern over the low collection of permanent voter card, PVC, in the ongoing continuous voter registration in Ugu State. Over 400,000 PVC were uncollected at the end of the voter registration on the 2015 polls in the state. In the five weeks of the fresh registration exercise, only 779 registered voters issued with temporary voter cards have turned out at various INEC offices in the state to collect the PVC. Also, 973 other eligible voters applied for transfer of the voter cards from where they previously registered to the places of residence. Spokesman of INEC in the state, Yinka Ogunshaye, told Rock City FM in Abiyokuta that the agency is disturbed over the low turnout. Um, those who have registered before now should visit any of the 20 LG offices of INEC in the state to collect their PVC. So up to now, the rate at which people are coming is not uh, encouraging at all. So then, uh, the citizens of the state, particularly those who have registered in the last registration exercise, to visit a record obtained from the state INEC office in Abiyokuta shows that only 122 registered voters collected PVC in the ongoing exercise in the E4 local government area. Abiyokuta North, 89. Abiyokuta South, 72. Shagam, 59. Adu Duota, 53. Ijabu North, 50. Yewa South, 46. Ikene, 46. And the Wekuru local government, 41. Old registered voters who collected PVC in Ijabode local government area were 29. Obafemi Wode, Odeda and Udubulu 28 voters each. Imeko Afon 27. Ipokia 19. Yewa North 18. Rema North 10. Ijebu North 7. Ijebu East 5. Ogun Waterside 2. The controversial Southeast Development Establishment Bill has passed the second reading in the Senate. The bill which aims at developing infrastructure in the southeast region had caused an opera when it was introduced on the floor of the house last week, resulting in it being stepped down. During the plenary on Wednesday, the bill was sponsored by Stella Odua and Samuel Anyaw. After the bill's presentation, the Senate President Bukola Saraki cautioned senators against heating up the policy in deliberating on the bill. Governor Nasir Arifai of Kaduna State has ordered the immediate arrest of leaders of a coalition of northern youth which ordered all Indigo in the North 19 states to leave the region. The group, which is a coalition of northern groups including Arawa Youth Consultative Forum at a news conference in Kaduna, ordered all Indigos residing in the North to leave the region latest by October 1 or they'll be forced to relocate. The group also asked northerners residing in the southeast region to return home immediately. The governor, in a statement by his media aide Samuel Aruan, directed the state attorney general to prepare charges of incitement against the group's leaders preparatory to the prosecution. Taking action to punish hate speech and inciting people who may feel unhappy about irresponsible government and they cannot use our state. Meanwhile, Northern State Governor's Forum has disowned a coalition of youth asking all Indigo youth to leave the 19 Northern State. The Forum Chairman, Governor Kashim Shatima in Madugari, asked security forces to arrest leaders of the coalition and investigate the motive behind the ultimatum they issued to Indigo in the region. The Governor also says the timing of the issuance of the threat is suspicious, considering the recent seizure of weapons cache of customs operatives and the rumor of cool plot. The forum, according to him, has been in touch with heads of security agencies and has taken measures to protect every resident in the North 19 state. 
In another development, President Mohamed Buhari has commended Governor Nasir Arifai of Kaduna State for his immediate intervention in the ultimatum issued by a coalition of northern youth to leave the northern parts of the country. Information and Culture Minister Al Haji Lai Mohammed made this known to the State House correspondent after the weekly meeting of the Federal Executive Council in Abuja. Buhari, according to him, thanks the governor for ordering the arrest of leaders of the Northern Coalition of Youth Groups, who he described as miscreants and jobless youth. The minister says the presidency condemns the ultimatum, saying it is a wicked plan by the faceless youth. Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has approved five new political parties. The Electoral Agency announced the new parties at its ongoing meeting in Kaduna, saying they met the requirements for a new political party. The new parties are the Advanced People's Democratic Alliance, All Democratic Movement, New Generation Party of Nigeria, Young Progressive Party and Action Democratic Party. With the five newly approved parties, the number of political parties in Nigeria has risen to 45. Last week, INEC said it had received 95 applications from political associations seeking recognition as political parties. Out of the 95 applications, INEC says two have voluntarily withdrawn. The Senate has asked the presidency to slash the 2017 hot fare payable by Nigeria's intending pilgrims because of economic recession. The senators, after a debate following a motion by Senator Ibrahim Dambaba and 30 others, won the hot fare be reduced from 1.5 million naira to 800,000 naira. Dambaba, in the motion, says the hot fare charged by approved private hot pilgrim operators is about 300,000 naira cheaper than the official hot fare announced by the National Hot Commission of Nigeria. After the debate, the Senate President Bukola Saraki asked the Foreign Affairs Committee to investigate the 1.5 million naira fare and report back to the Senate. You're still listening to the media news of Rock City, 11.9 FM. Up next, we we'll bring you foreign business and sport news. Please do stay with us. On the foreign scene, polling stations have opened for people to cast their vote in the UK general election. Polls is taking place at more than 40,000 polling stations across the country, with counting starting once voting ends at 22 BST. A total of 650 Westminster members of parliament to be elected, with about 46.9 million people registered to vote. Some votes have already been cast through postal voting, which accounted for 16.4% of the total electorate at the 2015 general election. To form a majority in the House of Commons, one party must win 326 seats. In 2015, a conservative majority was not confirmed until 134 BST. Iran says the attackers who killed 12 people in the capital Tehran were Iranians who had joined so-called Islamic State IS. Suicide bombers attacked parliament and the mausoleum of the Islamic Republic's founder Ayatollah Khomeini. Iran's powerful Revolutionary Guards accused Saudi Arabia and the U.S. of being behind the attacks. In an interview on State TV, Reza Sifullahi, Deputy Chief of Iran's Supreme National Security Council, said the attackers have joined Daesh from a number of regions inside Iran. IS earlier claimed the attacks a first for Iran threatening further assault on Iranian Shia Muslims. Iran's Revolutionary Guards vowed revenge for the bloodshed or point of the finger at the U.S. and Saudi Arabia in the wake of President Donald Trump's recent visit to the kingdom. The United Arab Emirates has warned that anyone expressing sympathy for Qatar could face up to 15 years in prison as a regional crisis escalates. UAE officials said Qatar needed to end its support for terrorist groups, a claim the Gulf state strongly denies. Several countries, including the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt, cut travel and diplomatic links with Qatar on Monday. Turkey, meanwhile, has approved a bill allowing more troops to be based in Qatar. Reports say Iran and Turkey are also planning to airlift food and water into the country as supplies run low. The Emir of Kuwait is mediating in the dispute, and the president of Turkey has also offered to help. But the UAE tightened the squeeze on Qatar on Wednesday. 
in business. Ministry of Finance says it has paid 375.8 million naira to 20 providers of information under the whistleblower policy. The ministry, in a statement by its director of information, Mr. Salisu Dembata, says the payment was for the recovery of 11.6 billion naira. Dembata explains that the payment was only for recovered assets that had been declared free of legal dispute or litigation by the Attorney General of the Federation. He said that, in addition, taxes have been removed before final payments to beneficiaries. The whistleblower unit is a multi-agency team resident in Federal Ministry of Finance headquarters. It is staffed by second Ds from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, and Department of State Services, DSS. Finally, Spot News. Players and officials of the Oshun United Football Club of Oshogo have been attacked by armed robbers on Oreundo Expressway while traveling to Oshogo from Calabar after the Week 14 National League competition. The armed robbers attacked them when the vehicle in which they were traveling developed a fault a few kilometers to Undo town. The bandits ransacked the 32-seater coaster bus, which contains 28 people, including 18 players, alongside technical crew led by the coach of the team, Mr. Duke Udi. The attackers marketed members of the team, particularly the driver of the bus and the team's goalkeeper, Ayo Ujo. Spokesman of the State Police Command, Mr. Femi Joseph, said the police were already on the trail of the hoodlums who, according to him, lived in the villages around the scene of the incident. Nigeria have named Ogenyo Nazi as captain for the 2019 African Cup of Nations qualifier against South Africa this weekend. The teams will meet in the opening group E clash in Uyo on Saturday evening. The Nigerian Football Federation have confirmed that Anazi will wear the armband for the Super Eagles with regular captain John Obi Mikel missing the match as he recovers from injury. In addition, news coming out of Nigeria training is that locally based attacking midfielder Al Hazan Ibrahim may earn himself a start, while Premier League players Alex Iwobi and Kelechi Yenachal have also impressed. That was the media news, and just before we go, the major star is once again. INEC worried over low collection of PVC in Ogun State. El Rufai ordered arrest of youth leaders who asked Indigo to leave the north. New five political parties approved by INEC. In foreign, we told you that people in the UK are voting in the general poll and also UAE threatened to jail pro Qatar citizens as regional prices escalate. For more stories and to listen to us live, please log on to our website www.rockcityfmradio.com forward slash live. Thank you so much for listening. I am Adin Mario O. Good afternoon.